you know, in Wisconsin, the focus is obviously on Governor Walker, but it seems like Donald Trump has sort of overwhelmed even Walker in this. Yeah, no, I think he's the, you know, he's, he's, the, he's the big shiny object for now. Uh, and, you know, I think one, it, it was really interesting to me. I mean, I've been disdainful of the way he's been covered because, you know, I, I think it is so unlikely that, I'm mean, not unlikely, I think he will not be the next president of the United States. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think anybody really believes he will, except maybe him. I'm sure he does. Uh, and, I, and I should say parenthetically, he was one of the largest contributors to the slash the stash thing for epilepsy. I shamed him into it on the, on the Morning Joe show, and he wrote a big check for it which I then went and I took to Mark Cuban and said, you can't let Trump <laughs> outdo you. And he gave me a bigger check for it. But I was appreciative of the Koch brothers. No, I didn't go to the Koch brothers. He drew the line. He, um, uh, but he, uh, uh, so I want to, I appreciated his, uh, his generosity. But um, uh, I, don't, I don't believe he's going to be president of the United States. But he does speak to um, a segment of the Republican Party that I saw very clearly uh, at the end of the 2008 election, the people who showed up at the Palin rallies, the people who John McCain got into uh, back and forth with at his, at his own rallies who, who said Obama wasn't an American and he was a socialist and he was going to destroy the country and so on. Um, and it was interesting to me that the day after, McCain, uh, after he went after McCain, Trump, uh, that uh, two people defended him, Rush Limbaugh and Sarah Palin. Uh, and I don't say that as a I mean, it speaks to yeah. the constituency that he uh, had. And so he does have a constituency in the Republican Party. And what he's done is he's, all those people who are trying to come down that right lane, you know, Cruz and Huckabee and all those other folks, have been for now crowded out of, uh, of the race. But... Uh, I don't think when the field winnows that he's going to be a front runner. No, but it is a little bit of the chickens coming home to roost uh, in several senses. In terms of American culture, you know, this has been building for decades, the sort of the glorification of celebrity and ego. And there's no bigger ego than Donald Trump. You know, he's a Kardashian of politics in that sense. And um, then there's the Republican Party and the the, out, the growing outrageousness of their comments over the last eight years. And so Trump is... Well, remember, four years ago, Trump was leading the polls in the spring uh, around the birther issue. He was very much leading sure. the, the, the well, notion that's the third aspect, is the hatred of Obama. Right. And how he taps into that. Yeah, so he, you know, he has a genius for pressing those those hot buttons. I don't think that constituency is, you know, uh, is, is, is enough to, to make him the nominee of the Republican Party. But I think it's got to really concern uh, the Republican Party. You know, you look at the report after the last election, they did an after action report on why they lost, and, it, and they said we have to have greater outreach to the Hispanic community. We have to have greater out outreach to women. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have to we have to have a more orderly debate process. <laughs> I mean, you know, well, they've, they've it, really, they? yeah. They, I mean, <laughs> I gotta say, if I'm like, if I'm Ryan's Priebus, I'm like, I'm reading this report and I'm thinking, we're not doing very well here. With it. That we're not checking off these boxes very well. So I, I think that the danger for the Republican Party is that Trump drags them all uh, too far, just as they were dragged too far. You know, after we lost the midterm elections in 2010, and we lost them spectacularly, um, I said to uh, the president the next day, I think the seeds of your re-election have been planted. And he looked at me like I was crazy. Um, it was like the Churchill story about Lady Clementine after the 1946 election saying to Churchill that, uh, that it was a blessing in disguise. And he said, well, it's rather well disguised, I think. But I said, he looked at me like I was nuts. And I said, I, I just think that this, the forces that have taken over the Republican Party are going to drag the party so far to the right that, that the, the nominee, in order to be the nominee, is going to have to pay too heavy a toll. And he's not going to be able to win 
a general election. And the, the danger is, is, that is still a danger for the Republican Party. They basically define themselves. I mean, look at Scott Walker. I mean, basically his program is we're going to repeal, on the first day, we're going to repeal the Affordable Care Act. We're going to repeal the Iran agreement. Um, there was one other in there. I mean, he's, huh? I didn't hear. Gay, gay marriage. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yes, exactly. So, he, first of all, he's going to be very busy on the first day. That's, <laughs> that's clear. But the Republican Party, you know, we're going to turn, we're going to, we're going to turn back the, uh, uh, you know, we're gonna, relations with Cuba. We're gonna, their whole posture right now is backward looking. Uh, it's reactionary. And I don't think you win elections that way. I, but to some degree, it's explainable by the fact that their anger and hatred and reaction is built on a, a conscious or subconscious realization that they're losing. You know, I think they will win. Yes. I mean, the, the truth is the Republican Party is going to have to reinvent itself. Yeah. You know, just as the Democratic Party at times has had to reinvent itself, you covered one of those elections uh, in order to, to yeah. win. And I think there are people, you know, and Bush may be one of them, who, who know that, but they don't know how to get there in this That's why he's at 10%, because he, he doesn't know what to say. But I think he's making a gamble yeah, that, right. you can, that, that, that you can uh, resist on some of these issues and still get there. It's a decent gamble in terms of the general election, in terms of the primary. The question is, can you get to the general yeah. that way? Yes. And I think that's an open question. So as for Governor Walker, you know, he's, um, you know, he, he is, as probably he's the most fundamentally political candidate of the 17. You know, I think he's... He seems like a not as intelligent Bill Clinton in some ways. Not nearly as intelligent. But, um, you know, they both probably wanted to be president from the time right. they were in grade school. Right. Or kindergarten. He seems a little more di disciplined, though. <laughs> in some ways, yes. Uh, but, but, I, but, the, but I think this, you know, the intelligence thing is not a small matter when you're running for president of the United States. So, I, I think that, you know, my experience has been presidential politics is like pole vaulting. Every, uh, every time you clear the bar, uh, the bar gets raised. And so, you can look good in the early rounds clearing the bar, but it gets harder as you go on, and the more you be get, get people look at you uh, and scrutinize you as a potential, actually as a p potential president, you know, you have to up your game. And so the challenge for him is, be, can he up, up his game? You know, and um, I, I think that uh, that's an open question. But he's talented, he's focused, you know, but he is making those Faustian bargains. I mean, he is very much, we, he's gone right on a lot of issues to try and win the Iowa caucuses, which is his opening ante for this race. Um, so in many ways, he's, he's more than others gambling uh, uh, the general in order to win the nomination. The other way he reminds me of sort of an antithesis of Clinton or the other mirror image of Clinton is that Bill Clinton always benefited by the opposition overplaying their hand, whether it was trying to shut down the government or so many times the Republicans played into it. And in Wisconsin, for whatever the justifiable reasons were, I think that the, the enemies of Walker actually ended up strengthening him by well, some I, of the I believe hands. that, yeah. I was a, and this probably wouldn't be a popular position in this room, but I was very much opposed to the notion of a recall election. Um, because, not because I, I, understood, I understood why people felt as, as they did. Sure, it's not an ideological opposition. I understand what you're yeah, saying. No, it's I just felt it was, it was strategically yeah. wrong. And, you know, 18% of the people who voted for Barack Obama uh, in uh, 2008 voted against the recall. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, they did it because they felt like it, it was unfair. And it, uh, you know, they 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 saw I, in certain ways they saw in Washington people trying to change the rules and uh, to undermine the president. I, I just think, and Walker benefited from that, and uh, and he emerged stronger from that experience. And it's the parable 
that is the sort of defining story of his candidacy right now. You know, I defeated yeah. big labor in Wisconsin so I can face ISIS. <laughs> I mean, didn't he say well, that? He said it, yeah. <laughs> and people That's reacted like this. But, uh, that's what I mean about the raising the bar thing. I'm not sure that's going to go in the, in the later rounds. That's not a good answer. Right. You know, there was an alderman in Chicago. I said this at a... Well, the reason he said it is because he, he's always said that the greatest moment of Ronald Reagan's presidency was firing the air traffic. I understand that. I'm not sure Reagan would have... I, I don't think so either. I think no, he, his theory was that when Reagan right. took on the air traffic controllers that, that Gorbachev's knees buckled. Right. That was right. His, that's yeah. his basic theory of history, but so there's an alderman in Chicago who, uh, I, I, when I was a reporter, I was uh, interviewing him, or I was just talking to him really about one of his colleagues who was thinking of running for higher office, and he just shook his head and he said, uh, just remember, the higher a monkey climbs a pole, the more you can see his ass. <laughs> so uh, I think that's probably an appropriate place to end the <laughs> discussion. <laughs>